Hi, Doris. Good evening. I'm just trying to get everything adjusted. Hi, Lori. How has everybody been? It's been two weeks since I've gotten to see your names and we could hang out together. Hi, Barbara. So what have y'all been doing for two weeks? Um, of course, I've been birding. The um, birding festival could not have had better weather. The birds were here, the warblers. It was amazing. Um, between the birds and getting all my flowers in the flower beds and pots, I have been so busy. My husband just got back from Florida today, so he's been gone three weeks, which meant that I had to pick up some of the things that he does on a weekly basis. It's amazing that you don't realize just how much another person in the household does until they're not here and you're finding that you need to, you know, throw that in there too. So um, it's been crazy, but he got home this afternoon and um, it's really, really good to have him back. So, um, hey, Paula. Hey, Roz. Hi, and Susan. Boy, lots of names on here. So I've missed everybody. Hi, Deborah. So, um, yeah, the birding festival was great. Um, you know, just busy holding down the fort. I had to mow three times. Um, it's a good thing we have a very small yard. Um, we used to fight over who got to the lawnmower first. I don't miss it at all. He can have it back. Um, I don't like messing with restringing a weed eater, so he's going to catch up on the weed eating. Um, but <laughs> it was crazy. You just really don't know just how much another person does until they're not here. So, um, hi, Paula. Um, is there some weather coming in from out west? I thought I saw something about some storms in the Midwest or something. Hi, Noreen. Oh, it's so good to have everybody here. Okay, um, not much in the way of anything uh, news that I want to share. I hope that you're all enjoying the new catalog. Um, I have yet to put in another order so that I can show you something other than the hues of happiness. <laughs> but honestly, I love this paper. It's so versatile that I want to show it a little bit more and uh, show you the possibilities of it. So um, I guess with that, I am going to flip the camera around and we'll get started. So it's been two weeks and now I have to figure out my little icons here. Okay. Hey, Melinda. Okay. Let's see if that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I can't believe that I forgot how to do everything in a matter of a couple of weeks. Okay. Maybe I should have done a refresher course. That was a little top heavy. I thought that was gonna. Okay, so now I gotta flip again. There. Okay, I think I got it. Let's see if I can bring it down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. All right. Um,. Little something I want to show you before we get started. At the birding festival, they have a vendor marketplace. And a friend of mine, his wife crochets all these different species of birds. And I want to show you my Nish and my Nelly, my little piping plovers. Are they not adorable? They're not back yet as far as we know. There's people out looking on the beaches daily, but we have not seen signs of Nish nor Nellie. Um, Chicago lost Monty this week. 
Monty is Nisha's dad. Um, Monty is um, part of the famous um, Monty and Rose Piping Plovers in Chicago at Montrose Beach. Monty was observed breathing heavily and he collapsed and passed away. Um, his, um, they're going to do, I guess you would say a necropsy or some, you know, they're going to try and find out what happened to Monty. He had been there, I think, for several days, if not a week on the beach. Um, but it's so sad that we lost Monty this week. So, and there's been no sign of Rose yet in Chicago. So, kind of little sad news on the plover front. Okay, so, these, this is the card that we're making. I did the blue-greens ahead of time. Um, the post that I made showing the designer series paper, that what you were going to need if you wanted to, to do this nine patch, um, I had three strips that were in the blue-greens, kind of like an ombre-type um, look, and then I had the pinks. So I went ahead and did the blue green so that I had examples to show you of the, it's called the sliced nine patch if you were doing it with fabric. And to do it in fabric, you create your nine patch, then you slice it so that you can insert your thinner strips of fabric. Well, we're not going to slice this up. That's why it's called the not-so-sliced nine patch. We're actually going to place our quarter-inch strips just over the top. And so it's going to look like you inlaid them, but we are not. We're taking a shortcut, okay? So we got to love our shortcuts. So here's the blue-greens, and I am going to work with Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, and Poppy Parade as the other end of the brights, um, the spectrum there. What I like about the Hues of Happiness Designer Series paper is that the, the paper is, there's some sheets that are variegated, meaning that you can go from your pinks to and your yellows to your blue greens and your purples. It's all on one sheet. It just kind of blends in. So what's really nice is I can, you know, do two different color cards with one strip of paper if I wanted to. Okay, so this is the not-so-sliced nine patch that we're going to do. Okay. Hey, Tony. Hey, Pat. Hi. Um, Susan, how do we know which is which? Um... Yes, they the plovers are banded, so the color sequence of bands that are on their legs um, will tell you who they are. Um, but when you look at um, our, our our plovers from Mommy Bay, Nish's his band went was solid all the way around. Okay. And this is their breeding plumage. Nellie had a break in her band. So we would know if we were looking at a plover and, you know, is it Nish or is it Nellie? Well, Nellie had the break in the band around her neck. Nish was solid. But here's the thing. Nellie didn't come alone last year. Nellie brought her sister, Birdie. And um, they were given their names um, in Presque Isle, Pennsylvania. Well, she brought her sister. And so we did have to um, go to the bands on their legs to tell if Nellie or Birdie is who we were looking at, if we had them out on the beach. Um, Nellie was on the nest. If Birdie even came near the exclosure, she was chased off last year. Um, so yeah, they are banded, but when we were looking at, um, field marks, 
for our plovers, Nish had the solid black band around the neck and Nellie's was broken right in the middle. So good question. Thank you for asking that. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Robin. How are you? Oh my goodness. I am um, going to try and not be nervous. Okay. So <laughs> um, say hi to Robin, everybody. Um, so let's get back to our card. And what we're going to do is the three one inch by six inch strips. We're going to cut these into one inch squares. If you've got a nice sharp blade, you can cut all of these at the same time. And we want six one inch squares. Now, these three strips will yield you two cards or two quilt blocks, okay? So I am just going to put them in here and we're just gonna cut them together. Like I said, I already did the blue green ones um, because I wanted to have some samples to show you what the finished card would look like. I just want to make sure that they're lined up nice and even. And I'm not going too heavy over the one inch line because I want to make sure that I can get six of these. And, you know, if you go over that line, then you're going to shorten the amount of the, you know, the length of the strip. And you're going to find that at the very end, you might be just a little shy, but the good thing is, is then you can tweak the final size size of your quilt block and make it work. But a lot of times, just like in sewing, when we've got our rotary cutter and our fabric and we're lined up on our, um, our self-healing, our, our mats here, and we're cutting with that rotary blade, depending on where you put your fabric, if you're a little heavy on... Um, one, you know, over the line, or if you've got a scant cut, then it makes a difference um, in your sewing. So here we've got all of our, our squares, okay? Now I'm going to bring in this so I don't get glue everywhere, and I need my grids. Where did I put my nine inch? Oh, I was so organized when I, oh, here they are. Okay. So we're just going to do, I'm going to do both of these at the same time. So we have our nine patch. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to go start out with the lightest to our medium value and Let's call this our darkest value. And then on my second row, I'm going to start with, I'm just going to mix it up. I'll end with my lightest and then I'll start with my darkest, go with my lightest and then the medium. Okay. So that's where, that's what it's going to look like when I glue these down. Now, what I'm going to do is I am just going to move my rows out of the way, keeping them in order so I know how to place them. And I always like to start with the center square. I don't like to work from the outside in. I work from the inside out. And I'm just going to paint some of the Tombow glue right there. Don't be too heavy handed. Now, this was my first row, my second row, my third row. I want this middle square. Let's make sure it's straight. 
And then I am going to glue down the four squares that surround that center one. This is just my preference. You can do it in any order that you are comfortable with. I'm just going to put that on top. And there I got a little too much glue. Let's wipe that off. Then I'll come out here. This is a new bottle of glue, and so it just wants to flow really well right now. Okay, and then this was my middle one here in the bottom. And you'll feel that paper just slide right up to there. Now, if you have any of your designer series paper that's coming off your grid, that's okay because you can cut the excess off. And if you find in your cutting that either your your nine patch grid might be a little, even a scant larger than three inches square, um, you can always, we're going to um, square this block up when we're done to make it a true three inch. And if we have to go a little bit smaller, you're, we can do that. Um, But hopefully, I did a good enough job that I won't be too far off. Now we're just going to fill in these corner squares. Again, right now, you can see that it looks a little off. I've got designer series paper hanging off the edges. That was probably all in the cutting. But we're going to square this block up and it'll be beautiful. What I love about the pattern in the papers that I chose is it makes me think of a batik fabric. And it wasn't as noticeable to me in this stage. But once I ran the quilt block through the, um, it's a, the flower um, embossing folder, then it really did make me uh, feel a batik um, fabric going on in my quilt block. So I didn't notice it so much at this stage, but after I got done um, with the quote quilting, then um, it all really gave me that feel. So... I'm just going to go ahead and do these real quick. Is anybody else creating along with me? You want to make sure that you're keeping your um, edges. You want to make sure that this is nice and straight because you are going to line up another piece of paper with that. It's no different than if you were sewing. 
you want things to um, match up really well. So you want a nice straight lines. I hope I'm putting this together right. I'm just starting to grab pieces and it's like, uh, Julie, you might want to check. For me, as long as I don't put two of the exact same colors right next to each other, I'm calling it good. And here you can see that I have some grid paper exposed when I push my seams right up to each other. That could be that the grid is bigger slightly bigger than three inches or it was my cutting um, of the designer series paper but we'll even it all out so it's all good new g i'm busy no mommy doesn't have time right now you'll just have to wait your turn I know. Well, my husband's been gone. I haven't been up here in my craft room much, um, not only because of birding, but our dog, Abby, who is quite the daddy's girl and is like glued to his leg. Um, she thought she had to be with me when I wasn't doing something else. And then I felt an obligation to sit with her like her dad does. And I wasn't getting anything done in my craft room. Okay. So there I've got my two, my two blocks. Now what we want to do is we want to square these up. And this is where I like my little guillotine trimmer. And so I am going to line the left side up on the three inch line and I can see I'm a little off, but I'm just gonna try and take, I'm just gonna try and take off any thing that's hanging over the edge. And I might have to fussy, be a little fussy about it. Um, This is what I this is what I like about the guillotine trimmer. You can take off slivers. I could not do that with the trimmer. Okay, so there's that one and then we'll just go in and do this one. I'm going to apologize for my nails ahead of time um, because I have been working in the flower beds. My hands look like a gardener's right now. I love flowers. I was getting distracted by flowers when I should be birding. It was all, it just all seemed like everything was coming at the same time this year. Okay, so we've squared up our um, nine patches. Now, the quarter inch by 12 inch strips that I'm using, here's what I, I think you can see what I mean, what I love about how this designer series paper goes from like one end of the color spectrum to the other. Here we're starting out, we, we've got our pinks and our melons and um, all of our pinks and yellows. And then it goes right into our aquas and our blue greens and our purples. I love that because about the six inch mark, I can get two, three inch strips out of this that I'm gonna need for one of my 
nine patches. Um, same here. Here's all my pinks and yellows. This end is my blue, greens, aquas, purples, and fresh freesia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together, and I am going to cut two quarter inch by three inch strips. Now you're going to need two of each pattern for your um, for your one quilt block. What do I do with my trimmer? So these are so dainty. And I'm going to put them right here at the top so that they're nice and tight up there. Again, these measure a quarter inch by three inch. And you need two of each pattern for a total of four strips that we are going to inlay or look like they've been inlaid into our quilt block. I'm only gonna put the one block, um, we're gonna just do the one card and then I'll go back and finish the other. So what we're gonna do is here you've got your nine patch and I've got all my strips that show the, the pinks and the yellows, okay? I like to put my nine patch on a piece of grid paper because I want to find the halfway point. Um, these are going to lay halfway, just in the center, going all the way around. However, you do not, we're not going to put glue at this end right away. We want this end to be free because I'm going to tuck the very last strip underneath it because I want, um, I want it to look like they're all just um, crisscrossing each other. So that looks about halfway there. I'm going to glue that down. Again, this... This is free on the left-hand side. And now I am going to use my other pattern. And I can, I can glue this all the way down, but I'm going to put it over the top of that very first strip. And now I'm going to go back to the floral strip. And I am going to glue that down right over the top of the last strip there. And if you have um, any of your paper that's going off the edge, you can just flip it over and snip off the excess with your snips. And then for the very last strip, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to lift up what I didn't glue down. And now we'll go back in. We'll put some glue on the back side of this strip and we will tack this down. Okay. So instead of cutting up our nine patch to work in these strips here, which in fabric you would be making your quilt block bigger by doing that. We're just going to put them right over the top and give it the appearance that we have chopped up our nine patch and um, inlaid the um, 
the strips here. Now I'm going to turn it over. And I've already squared up my block. So what I see showing here, I'm going to leave alone. But that little tiny um, end of the quarter inch strips, I'm going to snip those ends off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the embossing folder and give it its quilted look. I can't remember the name. Um, pretty fly is it pretty flowers? I believe this embossing folder is, but I am going to put this in the embossing folder and I'm going to run it through real quick. I'm going to do that off camera because if I put my machine over on the table that I'm working at, um, it's the vibrate, you know, with me cranking the wheel, I know something's going to fall off my table over there. So I'm going to just do this off camera really quick. Ooh, everything's shaking on this table too. I got to learn to be smooth about it. Okay, so let's open this up. Be very careful because there might be some glue that... There we go. And so what I love is I've got my quilting... And I really feel like I've got a, um, a batik fabric going on here. Okay. So there is our, there's our quilt block. Now we can start putting together our card. I am going to layer my quilt block. I chose early espresso because I was bringing out the early espresso that is in the designer series paper. I didn't want to do black. I wanted a darker color, but not black. And so I chose the early espresso. And I'm not real happy with that right there, but it might be a little too late. But you know what I can do? What I'm going to try to do it's a smell and mambo. Okay. I'm gonna color that. Now it's not so noticeable to me. Okay, I can live with it now. Plus, we're going to embellish. So we have a, we have all these chances to um, kind of hide the imperfections that we see. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this down. I'm going to try and not be very wonky. I have a tendency to see things a little wonky. And then when the glue's, when it's, you know, the glue's tacky, then I can't move it. That doesn't look too bad to me. I can live with that. Okay. So we have that. And I've picked two card bases. I have Melon Mambo and I have Flirty Flamingo. Now these are cut at eight and a half by five and a half and then um, scored at four and a quarter. I don't know which one I want to use yet. Although it doesn't matter because I made enough for two cards and And then um, I have two different embossed layers. I have the um, stitched greenery. This is a die. And here's the brick embossing folder. 
I think I'm going to do this card. We're going to go with Melon Mambo. Now, do I want to go with the brick or the stitched greenery? <clears throat> Anybody got a preference? Which, which background I should do? The brick or the stitched greenery? What would you like to see? I know, Holly, I wish, I really wish Stampin' Up! would put that little mini trimmer in the catalog. Okay, so either my comments aren't in real time. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to work with the brick. I really like that brick emboss embossing folder. And then this way it will it'll look like my flowers are growing up the side of the brick. So I'm just going to lay this here for right now. I might want to turn it and see if there's if there's colors falling a little differently. And then what I want to do is um, pull in my die cut flowers. The beautiful thing about in the Hues of Happiness designer series paper, you're going to get two sheets of the pinks and two sheets of the blue greens and purples. They look like this. What is amazing about the dies is there are six dies that will cut out six different shapes on these sheets of paper. So um, you're going to get a lot of images that you can die cut from these pages. And then what I do is on the straight edge, I go ahead and I fussy cut all my side um, pieces out because that's what I used. Where'd my cards go? That's what I used in the corner here. So don't throw away those edge pieces because you can use them along the sides of your layers. Okay. So I got a lot of pink going on here. You can tell that it really is bright. So I think we're going to go with the yellow flowers. And I know that I, I want this big image here. Um, this, there's a lot of contrast with this lighter yellow. But I feel for me that it just seems a little washed out where this has a richer color it all depends on what how you feel about it so I think I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna bring in some of the greenery I'm gonna right now I'm just playing with placement I want it down here in the corner of my my quilt and wouldn't you know it, every time you touch something, something wants to move on you. <laughs> oh, boy. So, and then we'll take... I think I might tuck that right there. And then I'm going to look at my pieces that are have a straight edge. Now, the great thing is, is if you don't have one of those, you can take... A full image and you can glue it down here in the corner and then just flip over that layer and trim off the excess and then you'll have it tucked right in the corner but here I'm thinking maybe move this up a little bit so this one here isn't going to be you know two sides but, and I am going to pop up my quilt and this flower. So, um, this flower here is just going to look like it's 
in the background. I'm going to move these out of the way. I already know that I'm going to use them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this right about there. And I might not even glue it. I think I'm just going to hold it in place. I'm going to trim this off. Then there's my corner flower. I just need some greenery coming. Maybe there. Well, let's bring our quilt block back in and see where we want that to line up. Because remember, I have greenery coming down from that angle, so we might want to just put this here. I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's use a glue dot and put our leaf behind first. feel like I'm all fingers and it's been so long. It's been two weeks since we've all been together and I feel like a fish out of water. I'm going to let this come off the edge a little bit and now I'll glue this down into that corner. So that flower is going to go into our background. Let's just go ahead and glue this layer down. I'm going to leave that nice little border all the way around. Okay, if you notice this card, I don't, this design, I don't have any sentiments on the front. You could certainly, I would use something small, but I just wanted it to be the paper and the quilt block, whatever I'm going to go with as far as a sentiment can go on the inside. So... Let's just lay this back in place again. And what I want to do is put some glue dots and get my, my greenery um, behind that flower. I'm not attaching anything to the quilt block. Right now, this is just all about placement. I think I might want to turn that flower a little bit more. Okay, like that. And then put this one kind of like coming off like that. Okay. So now we can I like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some liquid glue just behind this this side of the flower. I want to glue this to my quilt block, but I but only in the corner. Because then we're going to pop this all up on dimensionals. 
So, take that off there. You know what? I want to move it up a little bit more. Turn it a little bit. Now I'm fussing. <laughs> okay, that's better. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use dimensionals to pop this up. Oh, the sounds of the night. You can hear all the motorcycles right now outside. I don't know if you can, but I feel like you can because I can hear them pretty loud. And then let's just use a couple of minis. over here and then take our backs off you can make this card with whatever you know paper that you have it doesn't have to be the hues of happiness but I wanted to show you something out of the new catalog. And now we're going to place this. And I'm going to try and get it even. It's so hard for me to work without it right in. Okay, I'm going to have to tilt it up because that's what works for me. Now we'll push down. And now we have some dimension because we've popped our quilt block and our floral up. And this is in the background. And the only, um, before I put my embellishments on, we'll go ahead and we'll put our insert. Oh, before that, I want to punch my button for the back of my card out. Since all of this is going to get covered up, I'll just punch that from right there. Put our insert in here. And then we're going to put the backing of our quilt so to speak, on the back of our card. I think this will look pretty. I can do this one or I can go with the floral. I think we'll go with the floral. So we're gonna put the back of our quilt on our quilt card. I love putting designer series paper on the back of my cards. Okay, now I've got the button that I punched and then I've got my little signature stamp that I had made. I call them little buttons. And then we'll put this on the back. Okay, now we'll go back to the front. And what I am using, I really love these the rustic metallic dots. I love these. They're not gold. They're not brass. I just, I just love these. And I am just going to put 
a big one and a little one and uh oh where'd my little one go oh i see it and we'll put this one over up here come on now you need to stick well, okay, I'll slide a different one off. Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't go out of camera. We'll just stick this little one back on. I don't know if he wants to stick or not. Move him out of the way. And so there is our not so sliced nine patch quilt block with our florals our metallic embellishments the inside and then the back to our card so this was in the shade of pinks and then these were our blue greens very simple quilt block um to use um, as your focal point on your card. I get, there is room if you wanted to do a very uh, small hello, but you know, I think for me, for me, I had so much already going on the front that to find, you know, to fill in a little bit of space with a sentiment, I thought I would save that for the inside of the card. And I never know what I want to use my cards for. I let them, I give them time to speak to me. You know, does this say happy birthday? What feel does my card give me? And so I don't often like to put a sentiment on them right away. But if I was going, you know, there's some really pretty, I love the fonts in the Happiness Abounds. This is the stamp set that coordinates with um, the dies in the Designer Series paper. But I really do love all of these, but they're just too big for the front of the card. But they certainly could go on the inside. And then you could stamp the floral images and color them in with um, blends or if you have the Stampin' Right markers. Sharon, hi! I'm glad that you like this layout. Yes, Pat, you could. You could add a flower to the inside. Here I have another half. You could um, put this anywhere you want on the side. It wants to stick to my fingers right now, but you could definitely add another flower. If you didn't want to use your, um, board, you know, the, the images that are on the outside of the 12 by 12, you could definitely come in with a full flower. Here's a small petal that you could use, or there's a rose. So, yeah, definitely you can still adorn the inside of your card with these flowers, too. So many possibilities. But this is a layout. This is a quilt block that will lend well to any of your designer series papers. Just make sure that there's contrast. I think it works better... If you stay within a color family, although you could go really scrappy if you wanted to, but I think if you get a lot of different colors going on and patterns and things like that, it could look end up looking kind of muddied. But if you, what I thought lended really well to this is choosing, and let me tell you how I came up with the colors is I looked on the back of the designer series paper and it tells you all the coordinating uh, colors that go with the paper. So I looked for the pinks and I looked for the blue greens and that's how I had my little combos. The Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, and Poppy Parade. And I don't even know if Poppy Parade is part, um, I don't have it in front of me. Um, as far as if that color is in the hues of happiness. But um, I was coordinating 
this designer series paper with the brights designer series paper the brights and the hues of happiness go hand in hand so well so i was combining two different uh, designer series paper collections and so that's what i was pulling out and then with the blue greens uh, coastal cabana bermuda bay and pear pizzazz were my other three colors so um yeah that's that's the card for today that's our quilt block that we're doing and we're just letting the designer series paper do the work for us by um cutting out the images now if you don't have the dies you can fussy cut these images i know a lot of people really find it relaxing to sit and fussy cut their designer series paper so you definitely can do that but we're letting the paper do all the work for us and then you can go ahead and and put a sentiment on the inside or if you can find if I was going to do the outside, I would make it very dainty um, so that it didn't compete with your quilt block because this should be your focal point. This is nice. It's a nice touch, but your quilt block should be what um, is your focal point. So that's tonight's card, you guys. Thank you so much for spending your Thursday evening with me. I know this is, um, you know, out of the norm for some people, the evening um, live. It's just for the month of May so that I can um, get all my birding and my migration um, things in. And then in June, we'll be back to Thursday mornings at 11 30 eastern standard time so thank you for being with me tonight i look forward to seeing your cards over in the group quilt cards and more if you haven't joined you can go to the groups tab on the chirpy card makers page request to join and i'll get you in hi jean how are you hi jane holly oh so good to see all these names here i missed you guys Okay, I'm not going to keep you any further. Oh, before I forget, the PDF for May's Block of the Month Barn Quilt Card Kit, you will get that this weekend. Um, like I said, my husband was gone longer than what we had planned, and so with the other things that I had to work in with what I had going on. Um, I'm not going to be that much behind getting you the PDF than what any other month is, but I just wanted to let you know. Card get kits did go out on Monday. The PDF is on its way. It will uh, check your emails this weekend for that. What happened to the... Oh, Jane. Oh, the cat. Okay going to keep you guys a little bit longer. Last week when I was out birding, um, we were along the shore um, um, of part of the um, Cullen Park. Uh, you can put, there's a boat ramp and stuff that, you know, it's, part, it's a little bay that connects to Lake Erie and the Maumee River. Anyway, I was there birding. And as I was scanning the driftwood and the rocks for any shorebirds or whatever, I thought I saw a cat's face in my binoculars. But I tried looking for it again, and I couldn't find it, so I thought I was seeing things. Well, as I was leaving, a young couple and their little boy passed me, and I heard, the, um, I heard them say, I wonder if the cat's still here. And so I turned around. I said, oh, so I wasn't seeing things. I said, is it gray? And they said, yes. So being the animal lover that I am, instead of just going back to my car and just saying, nope, I'm not, I'm not doing it, um, I started asking questions. And he started calling, and the mama cat came from underneath, like these concrete, they look like slabs where they might have busted up a, um, a sidewalk or something like that. She came running from underneath some of those down in the driftwood. 
and uh, very friendly, beautiful cat. And I asked the wife if it was a boy or a girl, and she said, we think it's a boy. Well, while it was wanting the attention from her husband, she said, honey, why don't you lift up the cat's tail so we can see if it's a boy or a girl? Well, it was a girl. And that made the wife um, ask, she said, honey, can you feel the belly of this kitten, of this cat? And he did, and he said, she's got milk. So we're like, oh no, there's kittens somewhere in here. And he and his little boy went to the area that she came out of, and he used the flashlight on his phone, and he looked in the rock and found these two little silvery gray puff balls. So now we've got a mama cat and two kittens, and if there was a nor'easter, the water would push right up into where um, the babies were. Luckily, that wasn't in the forecast. But now I am going into, I gotta rescue them mode. Um, I said, to, you know, I said, well, I could help, but I don't have anything to get them home with, and that's when um, she mentioned that she had a cardboard carrier from one of the rescues that they brought a cat home in. So I said, well, if you've got that, I'll take them. So her husband collected the kittens and mama went right into the box with the kittens and I brought them home. I found a rescue that I totally believe in. They stepped up and said, we happen to have a foster who's available right now. So the next morning, I met the foster back at the location because we wanted to make sure there were no kittens left behind. This lady was amazing. She was climbing all over those rocks and balancing herself on driftwood that was moving back and forth. We, we took mama with us in the carrier with her babies. She never made a peep. She never even acted like she's got kittens there that she needed to get to. We didn't hear any mews from a hungry kitten. And we were positive that the only two kittens she had were the two that we had in our possession. So, um, the names are, I believe the mama's name is Cerulea. The little boy's name is Colin. And... Oh, I can't remember the, the little girl's name. But they all start with a C because they were found at Cullen Park. So the little boy's name is Cullen, Cerulea, and um, I can't remember what the little girl's name is. But they're thriving. They're doing very well. And, um, yeah, leave it to me to go out birding and coming home with a cat and two kittens. And then... <laughs> Okay, so my husband's in Florida, and I was I knew I was going to post pictures of these kittens and the cat on my Facebook page, and I thought his sister might see these, and so before she tells him that I've got, I took home a mama cat and two kittens, I better let him know from me. So I got a hold of him, and I'm like, don't freak out. I've already got a rescue that's going to help, but... You know, we rescued this mama cat and two kittens. Well, as soon as I sent him pictures, he was in love. Now, that is not the response I was anticipating because all four of our cats were rescues out of this neighborhood. And, um, yeah, we, you know, I could, oh, some of the stories I could tell you about how those went down. Um, for somebody who did not want them, we ended up with them because all of a sudden, you know, he's like, well, I don't know if I want to give it away. So that's how we ended up with the four that we have. Um, but yes, he did say, oh, I wish we could keep one of them. And I'm like, oh, I know, but nope, I've already got a rescue. They're going to be in good hands. And these kittens and this mama cat are going to get adopted quickly. So. Yep, that was the story on the cat. Um, very good ending. Um, you know, along our shoreline, especially anywhere near where people can fish from the shore, 
Uh, we tend to find that people leave their cats there. I think the in, their intention is there's a lot of foot traffic. Somebody's going to feel sorry for the cat and is going to take the cat with them. However, cats are so hard um, to place. I'm telling you, if, if I would have found puppies, I would have had rescue groups out there within a half an hour. I can guarantee you if I posted that I found a litter of puppies, they'd come out of the woodwork wanting to step up and foster these puppies. But there are so many cats and kittens in the world that cats just don't get the respect, respect that um, puppies do. So, um, it's hard. I know it's hard. Um, but it's a good ending. Um, I don't want to get down on whoever. I really do believe they were left there. Her, the kittens are like three weeks old. They weren't born there. Um, but, um, I, I just really have to believe that however they got there, if it was done by a person that what they th they thought would happen is somebody's going to take them because they're kittens. Well, we did, but um, I'm a big advocate on spay and neuter uh, with the pet population. So, um, you know, that's always a good thing. So as soon as I get some um, pictures from the rescue group, when they go up for adoption, I will share them so that you can see how adorable they are. So with that, I am going to say good night. Thank you for asking about the cat. And um, uh, yeah, they're doing well. So uh, foster fails, been there, done that. Oh, Brenda, I've never, quote, been a foster. I fail at just getting them off the street in my own neighborhood. <laughs> So, yeah, I would be a foster failure for sure. But um, our little zoo is full right now, so I couldn't take any more. So, anyway, everybody have a good evening. I will see you next Thursday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time with a new uh, card for you. So, everybody have a blessed evening.